Welcome everyone. So, we will today look at a problem class called the optimal stopping problem. Now, this problem has can be studied in various ways, but what we will do is we will model this problem as a Markov decision process. You will you will see that this problem actually has applications to a number of settings such as for example, selecting best best as uh, best candidates out of a, a set of candidates uh, make uh, is selling an asset uh, whose price keeps varying and so on. Okay. So, uh, this problem So, this problem is called the optimal stopping problem. So, in an optimal stopping problem there is a Markov chain that evolves in the background Markov chain. that evolves in the background on a state space let us say let us call this state space S dash. Now, the this Markov chain could be stationary could be non stationary possibly. So, let me write this here as possibly non stationary. And we will assume that S dash is finite here. Okay. Now, this uh, this Markov chain ha has is autonomous in the sense that it is con it is uncontrolled. Okay. The Markov chain is uncontrolled. So, that is why I said that we it evolves in the background is uncontrolled. So, left to itself uh, left to itself it will uh, evolve based on its own transition probability okay whatever the uh, transition probability is the problem for us is to decide when to intervene in this markov chain okay. when when do we uh, when do we uh, step in and and stop its evolution so what we have we have essentially two options at every time step we have the option to let it continue on its own you uh, uh, to let it continue to the next time step based on its own evolution or we have and or we have the option of saying quit and stopping the uh, stopping the Markov chain ok. So, if so we have we have two options to let us say actions. Is either continue or quit. Now, if we continue ok, if we continue so if we continue in state S at time t we incur a cost there is a cost to just keep to continue ok. We incur a cost a cost and let me denote this cost by by C C T of S. This is the cost that we incur if we continue the Markov chain when we are in state S at time t ok at time t here. Now, if we quit if we quit then we can pocket a reward equal to R t of s ok. So, if we quit in state s at time t we get a reward R t of s ok. Now, now this uh, this reward is incurred to us uh, is uh, accrued to us immediately 
and after that the evolution of the chain stops. So, there is no more further evolution and no further rewards or costs that we will incur alright. So, so the, the question we have at every time is whether we should either continue or quit. If we continue we incur a cost CT of S, if we, if we quit we, we get a reward RT of S and we know what S is ok, we are, we are able to observe what S is ok, what this uh, which means what the state of the of the Markov chain itself is ok. If we let this uh, let this chain evolve uh, to towards to the end of the time horizon that means if if we let the chain evolve at uh, up until time n then there is a terminal uh, then there is a terminal reward if t is equal to n which is the that is the end of the time horizon we get a terminal reward equal to h of s where s is the state state at time n. So, at if at the end of the time horizon we end up in state s we get a terminal reward which uh, a reward equal to h of s. Obviously, we do not know whether uh, the, the state uh, at time s will be the one which is most favorable to us or not because the chain evolves uh, randomly. So, it is quite possible that you know a, a reward at some previous time step was more attractive than a reward that we would get at the end of the time horizon. Uh, so, so the, the optimal stopping problem is to stop at the right time ok, we, uh, so that you get so that you pocket the best reward for yourself. And the, go the goal of the problem is to maximize the, uh, the, the, expected, the expected reward that you would uh, that you would get from this sort of a problem ok. So, yeah, so, the expected total reward that means that you, you pocket the reward that you get minus any cost that you incur through, uh, through the course of the problem. So, it is very cl uh, clear that this problem this sort of a problem setting has an application to finance in financial assets it is very common to, uh, to encounter a situation in which the you, uh, you have say bought an asset and its price keeps varying maybe the price varies as a Markov chain and, and at every stage you have to you, you need to you need to ask yourself are you are you going to be are you going to wait or that means are you going to continue to hold the asset or are you going to book profit and, and, and then take home the reward that you are getting. In, in assets such as for example options there is a finite time horizon until by which you need to book out otherwise the hor, uh, otherwise the op option becomes worthless. So, then that model that kind of a problem models a finite time horizon problem with a terminal reward or a terminal cost ok. So, this is uh, uh, essentially a matter of deciding how much to wait until you have seen enough to make a decision uh, to to so that to make a decision about booking about booking profit right so the this is basically the dilemma in an optimal stopping problem we we need to sort of uh, we need to sort of trade off the amount of time we are spending to in uh, in 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 trying to get a better reward versus eventually deciding that no the best reward is beyond, behind us and we now need to we we now need to make a make a decision about finally get uh, finally quitting ok. So, here is how we will model this problem as a as a Markov decision process. So, optimal stopping optimal stopping problem as a Markov decision process. So, we what we will do is let us uh, let us first begin with the time horizon. We are going to assume that there is a finite time horizon. So, we the decision epochs then for us this decision epochs or the times at which we will take the decisions this decision epochs are going to be denoted by t let us say these are 0 to n minus 1 
okay, there are uh, uh, those are uh, sorry 0 to n. So n is is the is the uh, is is where you 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 the 0 to n minus 1 is where you will be taking the decision n is the time step at which your uh, your system uh, at which your time horizon ends and uh, that is when you would incur the terminal reward. Now what we will do is we will introduce uh, uh, a, a new state space. So if you for the, in order to model this problem as a Markov decision process. So, because the original problem has has a Markov has a Markov chain that is uncontrolled, but gets controlled only when we intervene, we need to sort of come up with a new synthetic uh, synthetic formulation in which a uh, in which this particular aspect is introduced. So, what we will do is we will we will introduce a new state space S, which is denoted by which is equal to S dash union a state delta. Now what is delta? Delta here delta denotes the stopped state, it just denotes a state in which the Markov chain has been stopped. You have quit and then the Markov chain has stopped right. So this is what we call the stopped state. So the chain will enter this particular uh, stopped state after you, after you click quit at the previous state, at the previous time step. At the, if you if at time step t you click quit then at time step t plus 1 the state will be delta with probability 1. So you will surely so that is the stop state that you enter in okay. Now the actions that we have now depend uh, depend on the state that you are in. See earlier in as far as if you look at the Markov chain itself then while it is evolving autonomously Okay, while it is uncontrolled, while it is so far not been stopped, you can choose either to continue or to quit. But once you have quit, once you have quit, one has one has no choice but to uh, but one has no choice but to choose the action, you know, but to basically uh, one basically has no action left because the Markov chain has already shifted to a quit state, to a stopped state, right. So the 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 actions, so this was our state space, the actions are as follows. So let us write the actions, the set of actions at state in state S as follows. You have C comma Q okay. So C stands for continue and Q stands for quit. So if your state is in the original uh, in the uh, amongst in the state if your state is one of the original states uh, states of the Markov chain then you you can either continue or quit that means while the Markov chain is still autonomously evolving you can either continue or quit. Okay. But once the state is becomes delta then you have uh, really no choice you uh, let us say we, we have and that no choice the, 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 the trivial choice at that stage let us call that continue. So you can only say continue when you are in delta. It really does not matter what we call this particular action the, 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 the state just does not evolve further than that okay. So, so this is what it is. Now the reward that we get. Okay. Remember, uh, let us now write out the reward. Remember what we were get, what we were getting was that at if we if we continue, then we incur a cost CT CT of S in state S at time t, and if we quit, then we pocket the reward of RT of S. Okay. So the uh, so the reward itself for the MDP, which we used to write as RT of S comma A. Right. So, this is the reward uh, as uh, in state S and when we take action A. So, here I forgot to write this. So, this C here stands for continue and Q stands for quit. Okay. 
all right so now let us come back to the reward. So let us take a few there are separate cases here. So suppose your state is one of the original states ok. So, so S is in S dash and you choose the action to continue. In that case the problem tells us that the what we get what we incur is a cost we incur a cost of CT of S which means it is effectively a reward of minus CT of S ok. So, here it is minus CT of S okay, all right. Now, if the state is one of the original states and the action is to quit ok, if we take an action of quit but, but we do this at a time before the end of the time horizon right. So, if we quit any time uh, before uh, the end of the, before the time horizon that means for a t less than n if we do this for a t less than n then in that case we we get a reward equal to r t of s. Now, if your state is delta that means your chain is already stopped then there is you neither you incur neither a reward nor a cost ok. And then uh, uh, actually uh, this also is for t less than n. Now, and at the terminal at the terminal time instant then the reward that we get is h of s ok. So, r n uh, of s comma a uh, r n of s rather which is there is no action left here at the at the terminal uh, at the terminal instant. So, r n of s is just h of s which is the reward that we get at the terminal time instant ok. So, this is a, this is just the broad this is how we end up formulating a uh, optimal stopping problem as a Markov decision process. As we can see this uh, this sort of a problem the final thing left in formulating this problem as a Markov decision process is to define the transition probabilities. So, the transition probabilities the probability at time t of transitioning to state j when you start off from state s and take action a. This let us write out this in, uh, in, in terms of several cases. So, here this is so if your state s that means the state that you started off with is one of the original states that means the chain has not been stopped yet and the new state is also another, uh, one of the original states and the action that you took is continue then the state transition then it is like the chain has been left to itself it is evolving autonomously. So, then its state transition is given by its native uh, transition probability which is let us denote this by p j of p t of j given s ok. So, this is the transition probability. the transition probability so here this is the transition probability of of the uncontrolled Markov chain ok. Now, if the uh, previous state is one of the original states and the, the next state is delta ok that means you are and the action you took is quit right or if the current state and the next state are both delta and the action that you took is is continue for uh, and the time is less than n in that case the transition this problem this transition is then talking of a transition from either from a native uh, a state of the original Markov chain to the stopped state delta under action under the action quit or a transition 
from a, the stopped state to the stop state under the action continuum. Okay. In that case, in, in either case, these transitions are deterministic. So we define the stop stop state as one where the uh, uh, state uh, the, the in which the controlled Markov chain enters after we choose the action quit. So this occurs with probability one. And whatever other possibilities are there, they are all have zero probability. Okay. So this together defines for us a transition probability of the controlled Markov chain. So this transition probability of the MDP, probability of the MDP or the controlled Markov chain. So as you can see if uh, in this sort of a problem what we will uh, by, by modeling this, this problem in this way what you will be doing is now in and solving this as an MDP will result in a policy that maximizes the total expected reward. So that would then translate to maximizing the total reward that you would pocket in the, in the optimal stopping problem. Right? So what we will see next is an example of, of a, a very common problem that occurs during interviews uh, which is called which is called the secretary problem. It is a problem of uh, it, the problem uh, is of, of making an optimal offer or making the offer at the right time to a candidate uh, to amongst a set of candidates when we do not actually know if there is a better candidate still waiting for us. Uh, at the end of the end uh, uh, you know after this particular candidate that is that is being considered at this moment. So this problem is is called the secretary problem I we will see that how this problem can be modeled as a as a uh, as a an optimal stopping problem and therefore as an MDP and what we will then do is solve this problem at least to a good degree of approximation to get some insight into how how these sort of problems uh, or into how one should be actually taking decisions about optimal stopping. The main purpose of doing this calculation is, is, is for you is to are two folds one is, uh, one is to show you uh, what the, the nature of structural solutions that one can get and the kind of insight that one can obtain into these sort of problems. The other is to also demonstrate for you how the Bellman equation can actually be used in order to efficiently solve a problem like this. So here is our the what is called the secretary problem. So in the secretary problem what we have are n objects or n candidates let us say ok. Let me write this as n candidates. Now these candidates appear for an interview in a random order. We do not know uh, the, ra uh, the rank of any particular candidate, we just know that they are ranked and there is a best candidate and a worst candidate uh, and, and there is a relative ranking amongst the candidates. But when we see a particular candidate we, we have no way of knowing if there is a better candidate out there uh, which we have not yet seen. So candidates keep appearing to us in, a, in, in the list of the in the interview process. 